Good day, guys. Um, I'm in our Liberty Link paddock today uh, in Mungandha, Australia. And what I'm doing is um, I'm just determining whether our crop needs to be watered and um, uh, when actually it needs to be watered. Now, in Australia, we use moisture probes. Okay, now this particular paddock has a moisture probe in it. Uh, I, won't, I won't take you up to it now, but um, basically what it is, is it's a probe that goes down in the ground, um, down into the ridge. Uh, we, we farm on uh, furrow and ridges here. And the agronomist comes along and he, he puts a monitor down into the um, moisture probe and it takes uh, readings of the moisture availability at different uh, depths in the soil. And um, it'll basically tell you what the moisture deficit is um, at a certain stage of the plant growth. Um, now, we don't use that alone. Um, that's just a, it's a guide, an aid. We just use it as a, uh, sort of to help us out. Um, but we use a lot of other methods to, to determine whether the crop needs to be watered. And really, um, you know, if you go away from developed countries, you go into developing countries where they grow cotton, um, these would probably be the only ways that they use. And it's also very important to know, know your crop, to be able to read it because, well, you know, for all science and technology is good, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's not to be in an end all, as they say. Um, Rightio, this, this Liberty Link paddock over here is now 120 days old. We planted on the, uh, well, just short of 120 days old, actually. We planted on the 12th of October. Um, the moisture requirement for this crop at this particular time is about 8 millimetres um, per day. Okay, and that equates to about 8 megalitres of water per hectare. Now, cotton is, um, technically it's actually a zero fight, a, a desert plant. Um, it can survive with very little moisture, but we're growing it artificially here um, for maximum yields um, to produce as much cotton as you can for clothes production and all other textiles and ropes and whatever else we use it for. Um, so really we, we are growing it artificially and getting the most out of it we can. Um, so to get a particular yield, and in this case we, we're hoping for about four, four and a half bales to the acre, um, we need to put on eight megalitres of water per hectare. Just to give you a, um, a, a comparison, um, sugar cane, which is also a pretty thirsty crop, uh, requires about 6.4 megalitres a hectare, and wheat is anywhere from two to three megalitres per hectare. Right here, I'm going to show you how we go about determining whether this crop needs to be watered. First of all, we start with the leaves. Okay. Um, <clears throat> now, as you can see with this leaf, it's very turgid. In other words, it, uh, the cells are full of moisture within, within the um, leaf of the plant, and as a result, the leaf is curling upwards, okay, curling upwards toward the sun, and it's got a nice healthy green um, color to it. Now, if this plant was stressed, the plant, the um, the leaf would start drooping over, over um, downwards like that, and it would start getting more of a yellowy um, uh, tinge to it. Okay, incidentally, uh, cotton. Um, it has a mechanism where it actually follows the sun throughout the day. The leaves follow the sun. Uh, sun's up. Oh, oh, it's behind the clouds at the moment, but it's up there anyway. And you can see it's pretty much all facing toward that. Now, for you, those of you who know geography, um, that would mean that the plants go from east to west and they pretty much arc throughout the day. Now, if there is moisture stress uh, in the plant, um, the plant will actually turn, the leaves will actually turn away from the sun and uh, pretty much shut down um, just to uh, reduce photosynthesis and uh, well transpiration and photosynthesis. Okay, Doug, that's the first thing we look at. The next thing we look at is um, is the nodes above white flower. Now I'll, I'll explain that. Let me just find a nice little sample over here. Right here. Here's my white flower over here. Okay. Now that white flower is the next. Uh, that's going to be the next bowl in this plant. Just to show you what a bowl is. Um, here's all the bowls here, that's the fruit of the plant, that's where the, um, the lint is, is uh, produced, the fibre and seed of the cotton. Um, those are still fairly young, they'll just keep expanding and uh, growing outwards and, um, until they burst open and, and reveal the uh, cotton inside. Right here, coming back to this white flower, now this, um, this white flower is going to be the next bowl that's produced. So all those bowls were once a white flower. This is the next one. Um, and what I do is I, 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 I go down to the node of this um, white flower. That's your node over there. 
where the um, leaf axle is formed. And I'll count above it, the, the, the nodes above that white flower. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, oh, you can see here, and six. Okay, now what that's telling me is basically if a cotton plant has got uh, six, six um, nodes above white flower, it's probably got about three, four days, um, or even five days, depending on the weather, um, to go before we need to irrigate it. If, um, if they're five and a half nodes, then um, we've got a couple of, uh, that's probably one or two days to we have to irrigate. And if you're at five nodes, then you have to irrigate on that day. Now, if it drops down to four nodes um, per, uh, above the white flower, that means we've actually induced moisture stress in the plant. Just to get, uh, define moisture stress quickly, is basically it's saying that this plant over here is um, using up more water than it, what is available in the soil. So basically we are pr providing less than 8 millimeters per day to this plant and it's actually starting to shut down. In fact, at a certain point it will shut down and um, that decreases our yields quite, quite badly. Um, right here, the next thing we look at is, a, is the color of the stem. Um, right here, you can see it's got a pretty green green color with a slight pinky tinge. If you can see that pretty clearly. Now, um, as soon as this uh, plant becomes stressed from moisture um, shortage, um, this this will turn a very um, a very dark sort of red color. Now you can see on these um, on these lateral branches, there's a bit of uh, that that red color. But basically, you look at the main stem. And um, you can see that's still a pretty healthy green colour, so that's all good. Okay. Then the next thing we look at is down in the soil. <coughs> now, I just hope we've got enough light down here to see. Yep, to see the soil. Right here. Now th this is a vertisol, um, vertisol grey soil. Um, it's a self-mulching soil, and it's got a, a clay percentage of about 65 percent. Now that's pretty high. Now any. Any uh, soil with that sort of clay percentage, you'll you'll start getting this cracking. Okay, now that's pretty much caused from um, expansion and contraction properties within clay. Uh, when it's wet, it expands, and then of course when it dries, it contracts, and that leaves these cracks over here. Okay, now we're going to ignore these surface cracks because that appears oh pretty much two days after planting, and we're going to dig down just below that and see what, see what see what we got. Oh yeah, I'm just going to clear a patch, take all these surface cracks out. Right here. Now you'll notice down here that pretty much below that there, there, there aren't any really big cracks. Okay, we have, one, we have one pretty big one starting over here. Okay, now when that opens to about that wide, then that's pretty much uh, indicating that um, there's, there's very little moisture down below that, and um, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, contracting and cracking. Right here, now you can also feel that, you can see the consistency of that soil. You can see there's a lot of moisture in there. Okay, that, that um, yeah, so there's still a lot of water in there. And then uh, the next thing we look at is up on the ridge. This is in the furrow, this, this crack over here. So we look up on the ridge. Okay, same deal here, we just pull the, um, pull the surface cracking away. Okay, now what happens on the ridge, it's basically when the soil contracts, it, it uh, creates a crack right across the ridge. Okay, you have the cracks running across the ridge, and then you also have cracks uh, running down the ridge, uh, down the length of the ridge. You can see one just starting over here. Okay, that's starting to run up the, uh, up the ridge. And, um, but that is basically, yeah, um, that's just the beginning of it. Basically, once it's run across that and it widens a bit more, then it pretty much and and it's more there are more of them. Like over here, you can see it's still pretty. Um, there's not much cracking in general, just one here and there. Okay, and you also look at the consistency of that soil, and she's pretty wet. Oh yeah, so what we can um, deduce from looking at all this is basically, um, well, we're looking at probably about. I'd say um, anywhere from three, even four days of um, uh, to irrigate next. Um, that all depends on the um, the weather, of course. If it's um, hot and hot, uh, dry and, and windy, then the evapotranspiration increases. That's um, combination of the ev evaporation 